What's going on, Fishaholics? Today's bait right here. Oh. <laughs> Some big eels. So I always like to use American eel as my strip bait for fluke. You make like perfect large uh, bait strips and it never comes off the hook. So that's the strip bait you want right there. Nice and long, and I'm gonna put that on the back of a bucktail. All right, bait is all stripped up. I'm heading back over to my car. I'm gonna launch the kayak, and uh, hopefully catch some big fluke. I'm just gonna pedal around out in some deep water, and hopefully that's where the fluke will be hanging. I fished the south side yesterday, and uh, caught some decent fish, but nothing giant. And I was actually fishing the Ditch Witch Derby yesterday, and I was trying to catch fish big enough to weigh in, but that didn't happen. I caught like my biggest fish was like four pounds. So today I'm just fishing the north side because uh, it's too windy on the south side. So uh, let's find some fluke, some fluke All right, guys. So we're all ready to go. Look who I ran into. What up, guys? What's the what's the Montauk report? I was fishing this jetty right out there. Red hot bite. Red hot bite. Ten out of ten. Sea robins. Large sea robins. Out there. Best sea robin bite of my life. Too short fluke. I only fished 30 minutes. I probably caught 20 fish. <laughs> 20 fish. Sea money's taking over Montauk. Yeah. And you're going on the lazy bones We're now. Going right? on the lazy bones, some party boat. Alright. We'll see yeah. how it goes. Alright, cool. Yeah, but it was good seeing you, dude. Yeah. I'll catch you later. Hopefully, yeah. I'll see you. Let me know when you're uh, when you're going up to the canal or Cape Cod. I'll go up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. If you want to fish this jetty afterwards, I'm trying to go back out there. When we get back, I don't know if you'll be Yeah, out. I'll fish with you after if you want. Yeah? Yeah, I'll fish with you. We can hit that jetty. Yeah, yeah, And that jetty, um, that jetty like I said, is a lot better, a lot, lot better quality right? for fluke, and yeah. you catch a lot more. I mean, I got two over there, so and I only fished one. I, I, I was kind of like, shit, I should run out there, because I saw you every time your rod was bent. I Dude, was... I every other cast, it was a fish. Yeah. I missed some fluke, too, so. Awesome. Are you using the gulps, too? All right, a little choppy out here, but we made it out. Kind of cool running into sea money, chilling out here in Montauk. Maybe we'll uh, hit up a couple spots after he's done on the lazy bones or on the party boat, and after I'm done uh, fluking out in the kayak. Uh, you know the conditions are a little choppy, but I think I'll be able to make something happen. I got the perfect bait here. You know eel strips. I mean, just look at that. Look at that gorgeous. You know, bucktail with that nice uh, strip of eel tail. I would fish the far point uh, to the west of me, which is uh, Culloden Point. But uh, because of this, you know, crazy, I don't know, northwest, southwest, or just west wind, I'm not even going to attempt that. I'll just get soaking wet. So I'm just going to go out here to a ledge that I know where it slightly starts dropping off, and I'm going to drift that ledge and kind of drift it to the east. And uh, hopefully I can pull up a couple big doormats or just you know catch some fluke I'll be happy catching anything you know how I am I'm happy as long as the rod is bending that's all that matters let's uh, drop her down oh just had a hit had a little nibble there he is fish on probably a sea robin oh sea robin Good, he's off. All right, now what we're looking for, let's try dropping this down again. We're looking for some flounder, some big flounder. Nothing less than six pounds. <laughs> That's why I'm using this really big profile. Hoping for something large. Looking for quality over quantity. And uh, looking for fluke over sea robin. This is like rougher than kayaking off the, the lighthouse and the rips, Jesus. The tide's going that way, the wind's coming this way, and that's why the swells is so high. There he is. 
Found one. Feels like a fluky dookie. Coming a little shallower was the ticket there. Oh, it's a nice one. Shallower was the ticket. That's an easy keeper right there. And that right there is one of the reasons why you use a big, large bait like that and you weed out all the smaller fish. It's like a 20 incher. Don't definitely don't need to measure this one here. Put them on the stringer. I don't even know if I really want any fluke, but I think Simon he said he wants some fluke, so I might uh, end up giving it to him. I think he's leaving tonight, so I'll help him have some more fish for himself there. I'm out here all the time, so I can get fluke or striper or whatever I want, anytime I want it, really. But we got one in the box. That's good, that's good. All right, let's drop down again. Maybe I'll find some more. Usually that's how it is. Once you find like one decent sized fish like that, you're gonna find a few more too. I was way out in like, I don't know, 60, 70 feet of water, came into about 49 feet of water, right where that ledge is and that's where that fish was hanging. Come here, you nasty little devil. There is he, there he is. Stinky sea robin. Ah, these sea robins are terrible. It's a good size striped bass bait one. All right, one last final spot here. I'm gonna fish it for like five, 10 minutes. If I don't get a bite, I'm going back to the beach. terrible bite out here today and I don't think it's because of the fishing like or the fish or the fishing I think it's just because of the wind it's really really tough to get like a good drift and to work this bucktail along the bottom just had a hit pretty decent hit too I cannot escape the sea robin. Sea robins are all over the place. That's a flounder right there. Got some weight to him. Okay. There we go. Second fish of the day and it's also a keeper. Easy, easily a keeper sized flounder. Look at that one right there. The eel strip does it again. About a 20 inch flounder.
Took me a while to get that second fish. Probably about an hour and a half. All right, that's two on the stringer. All right, Fishaholics, yesterday's catch right there, about four pounds of that flounder. And uh, to be honest, I actually wanted to drop that off to sea money, or I wanted to also fish with sea money, but I had another commitment. So, uh, with, you know, with another friend, I didn't want to bail on him to go do another thing. So, uh, sorry, sea money, I couldn't make it. And uh, supposedly he caught a lot of fish. So that's that's what he's been telling me. So, um, also, what what do you, what does a guy like me do when he goes out there, works his ass off to try and catch fish? He catches very few fish, but he still catches dinner. I guess I do catch and cook. So <laughs> I got the eggs chilling here, ready to be stirred up. I got the breadcrumbs, got the electric skillet, heating up with some oil. So basically we're just gonna fry up this flounder, make little fish nuggets, which uh, is one of my favorite things to do with any kind of fish, like bluefish, flounder, striped um, stripe bass. And uh, this is my kitchen, by the way. My Montauk kitchen, nothing really special. Um, you know, as long as I have the electric skillet and the microwave, we're good to go. You know, I pretty much survive off of this stuff. If I didn't have these two items right here, I'd be eating out a lot. So, uh, I got pretty much the essentials. And uh, once I fry this fish up, I'm going to add it to the special sauce here, which is going to make, you know, this fish pretty much taste amazing and give it all its flavor. And uh, with all that flavor, I'll be able to pull this fish out for lunch or a snack or, you know, for dinner, hot or cold, and it's going to taste excellent for like the next week or so. So I'll be eating fish pretty good. So uh, anyway, let's get cooking. All right, all washed off and cleaned. And I still got some extra. I'm going to save that for a little later. But for the video, I'm just going to cook up this right here. All right, we're going to egg. Double, double coat it. Drop that in the Italian breadcrumbs. Usually I like using panko, but I started using Italian because uh, it's cheaper. And uh, you get like a, a better thorough coat on it. A lot of times you miss a lot of spots with the panko. Alright, the fish is definitely ready for the fryer. And that oil is ready for the fish. Looking good, looking nice and nice and hot. Give it like two, three minutes, you know, on each side, flip it, make sure it's nice and crispy. Like that's key. You want it nice and crispy and nice and firm so that when you mix it with the special sauce that you know you get a nice even coating without the, the breadcrumbs falling off. That's key, that's key. Oh yeah, that fish is very done. Alright, all fried up. My first little batch here. I'm going to throw them in the skillet again. Next is this Kraft sweet and sour dipping sauce. Pour a bunch of that on it. There you have it. Sweet and sour flounder nuggets. Boom. Let's give it a taste. Taste right here. Look at that. Nice even coating. Whew, really hot. But really, really good. And to be honest, I'm not a big fan of flounder just because it has very little taste to it. I would say flounder is probably like a good fish to eat if you're not a fish person because it has very little fishy taste to it. You know, there's no red meat or any kind of, you know, it, it tastes like chicken really. You know, it's a little softer. It's like, it's like, really, it's like eating really moist chicken, basically. But look at that perfection. Doesn't that look amazing right there? So good. 
Mm-mm-mm-mm. Simple, tastes good, and it makes like a bland, it makes a bland tasting fish taste really, really good. Uh, personally though, whew, hot. I would recommend cooking this type of fish with like striped bass or something that has a little bit more flavor to it. You know, this, this, it tastes like I'm eating like soft chicken right now. I mean, it still tastes really good. You have that like sweet and sour, little saucy bite to it. So, yeah, this is the Montauk life. You fish all day, you're on the water all day, and then you eat fish all day. That's pretty much about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the video, and uh, hopefully I'll have some more videos out for you guys. I work a ton out here, so it's always hard to, you know, manage work fishing, and then YouTube fishing, and just fishing on my own. And I've been fishing a lot, actually, but a lot of times I go out for like an hour or two, you catch like, you know, say a few flounder, a few fluke, you know, or a few stripers, a few bluefish, nothing really special, so I just don't even make a video. But, uh, I mean, if you guys want to see you know, everything that I'm catching, post a comment in the comment section, let me know. And uh, if you want to see maybe a collab with, uh, say, Sea Money or something, I know we're trying to, like, put something together for, like, August. Uh, um, you know, we're trying to get together and do, like, a collab, maybe, like, a, a challenge collab or uh, maybe go up north or something. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Try this recipe out or try cooking fish with that sweet and sour sauce or sweet uh, Thai chili sauce is also really good. But, uh, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed, and never forget, live to fish, fish to live.